Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great, Matt. How are you? I am doing great. I am in uh, South Florida. I'm further south than you are. Then why are you wearing a coat? I can see you wearing a coat. It's, <laughs> I, I, it's I 80 cold. degrees in Jacksonville. It's got to be 82. It's got to be at least 85. It's like where you 85 are. degrees outside, but I got the air conditioning cranked down to like 68. And so, so if I'm not sweltering hot from coming inside, you hang around inside for too long, I get the chills. So you're so in I Delray gotta, Beach. All right. Well, I'm at Delray Beach. Good, it's good stuff down there. Nice, nice weather. Good, good stuff to be down. All right. Episode 160, biggest mistake investors make. The biggest mistake investors make. And really, I got this off of a quote, and, and, I'll, and I think I'll give it to the, who it says. So the greatest mistake to do is nothing because you can only do something little. Okay. So I'll say that again. The greatest mistake is to do nothing because you can only do something little. And who said they that? Said, a guy named Edmund Burke. Okay. Edmund Burke is credited with saying that. So we can take this in several different directions. So let's let's do that. But um, the reason a couple of things have, have happened uh, along the way, just in the last couple of weeks, um, one would talk about, uh, you come across business owners, you know, this is about building wealth, business owners building their wealth, right? And, and, and I, I see it often where they, they're kind of overwhelmed, so they do nothing, or they don't have a plan, so they do nothing, right? Or because they don't know what they don't know, they do nothing, right? Well, can I, can I bring up an example of me doing nothing? So the last time the economy tanked in, in 07, 08, 09, okay? In two thousand, end of 2006, I liquidated all my properties. I think we had 15 or 18 at the time. We liquidated everything. And I had cash. But I didn't go back into the market in 09, 010, 11. I could have made so much money. But what did I do? I sat on that cash because it felt more comfortable than uncertainty. So right. that was a mistake. Now, granted, that's a long time ago and I learned from it. But I, I want to bring that out because I can point the finger at myself. I have done that where I'm sitting on cash and rather than invest it, I held on to it and rarely holding on to anything. It's false. It's just false. Yeah. It, it's, so we call that the, 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 the cost of security, the cost of safety. So the cost of security, the cost of safety is sitting money in cash. And what is cash earning? You know, 0%. Well, right? it's, actually, it's actually losing about 7% right now. If you're sitting on According cash, inflation. inflation, right? Exactly right. So the cost of safety is is actually expensive. It's minus 7% return because you're sitting in cash, you're not getting any interest and inflation's up 7%. So the cost of safety is what we call that, the cost of safety. It has a cost associated with it. But just in the last two weeks, I've come across some new clients, some new uh, prospects, some new entrepreneurs, some new business owners. Again, we're about building wealth and using your business. And, and their, their greatest mistake is to do nothing, right? So they have a lot of cash, uh, and they've had cash for about five years. Yeah, I, they could have invested in anything and, and been better off than they are today, right? So they could have invested in the stock market. The stock market's up over the last five years. They could invest it in real estate. Real estate is up the last five years. They could invest it in their own business. Their own business is up over the last five years. They made it through COVID really well. Uh, you could have, you, you know, you talk about buying other cash for other businesses. You could have bought another business and that would be up. Uh, uh, most businesses. So the cost of doing nothing is they're still where they were five years ago. They got this money sitting there and it's done nothing. And, and they felt safe and secure, but it didn't do anything. So so the other saying goes into, you know, what is that? Uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, Yeah. right? Same thing over last year, didn't do anything with the money. It's still sitting there. I'm going to do nothing again this year. Maybe something will come along three years, four years, it's five years in. And they get busy. They forget to do something. They got busy. So there's another aspect to this, which I call, you know, they didn't have a plan. They don't, they don't have a plan. They didn't have a plan. Usually when you get, you need to plan for when you get out of the market and to get back in. We talk about the real estate market and the stock market. When do we get out and when do we get back in? Because that's actually two decisions. It's not one, hey, we get out. It's two decisions. But the, yep. the decision, I think, is the, plan, <laughs> the one decision. You got to have that plan. Yeah. So an example of that would be the government gives you um, tremendous tax benefits 
to think ahead when it comes to a real estate transaction. It's called a 1031 exchange. Yes, great example. If you plan ahead, so I'm going to sell this, it has to be an investment property, you can't do it with your own personal home, but right. you can do it with any investment property, like kind investment. What does that mean? Um, you, keep, you If it's real estate, you can buy real estate. That's the easiest way to say it. Um, yeah. But you can liquidate a piece of real estate, but then you have 45 days to put another piece of property under contract and then you have six months to close if you do it in that period of time you defer the taxes so now you've moved your capital gain from one so the government is telling you the irs is telling you if you have a plan we'll incentivize you so you don't have to pay tax on that transaction so if you need if you need the money well then <laughs> a different plan but oh sorry all right <laughs> <laughs> I went drinking my coke down the wrong pipe. Hold on. So, so you know, it always pays to plan ahead, a hundred percent of the time. And so the mistake, uh, the mistake that investors make, including myself, is I think not knowing, uh, being very active in one place. Like right now, I feel very experienced in the county I'm in, uh, which is Clay County, Florida. I can tell you the average price per square foot for the past 12 months. So why does that matter? Because I know what the property values are worth. So here's here's a plan, for instance. I have a house that I'm in and it is appreciated to the point where I don't believe it can continue. It feels just like 2006. So I'm gonna sell that house. And I've had a couple of people say, yeah, but you gotta buy the house on the other end. And I said, look, I'm looking for a needle in a haystack and I'll find it. By the way, I just visited my needle in a haystack today. Not a great house, but I can get it at the right price. And um, and that was because it's not on the market yet. So you can find these needle needles in a haystack. However, if I sell at the top of the market and they bump the rates, then I know the prices are going to come down. And I'm going to have cash and be able to go into the market again. So my plan is I want the cash so I can go invest in other assets. If it means business assets versus real estate and I have to rent for a period of time, where I live is, is not that important. What is important is understanding that the market goes through these ebbs and flows. And if, you're, if, you're, if you don't have a plan, you're just gonna, you're gonna go up and down like, like you're in the boat, but you're not steering it. Right. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. So, so planning ahead, right? So I have a client who's got uh, two uh, rental houses and it's actually houses that they inherited from their parents and they rent it out instead of doing anything with it. That was the easiest thing to do. And now they're ready to sell both those houses. And again, I started talking to them exactly what you're talking about. That 1031 exchange would be, all right, if we identify a property in advance, we can buy some, you know, they want a beach house, you know, beach house, a lake house, a vacation house. It's okay as long as it's a rental property, right? Remember, it's like a property. They had taken those houses and they were rental properties. As long as you buy another rental property, you get that 1031 exchange, which really means you don't pay any capital gains tax. Um, so if you go move that to your beach house or to your lake house, you'll be able to buy this and it'll be a rental property. Got to keep it a rental property. And then you guys can use it for your family or use it for repairs. There's a whole bunch of strategies about how to use it economically. But the point is, like you were saying, you got to plan that in advance because you've got to identify the, the new property in 45 days to avoid the taxes. If you get lazy, if you don't do anything about it, and like how often do they sell rental property houses? Not very often, right? They may not know or be aware of these type rules, but it's all right. So here's the plan. We've got to identify a property because you're going to list that thing um, next week, March 1st. Real estate's still pretty hot. Could sell in two weeks. We've only got 45 days to identify a new property. You better start looking now. You know, the other thing they could do is uh, they could, um, with a 1031 exchange, they could invest into um, someone else's, in, like yeah. into an apartment complex, in a, in a fund with someone else, in an yeah, LLC that someone else owns. Yeah. That's a light transaction, but they could become a passive investor in that. And, um, and potentially even receive income from that, um, which, so again, this is planning and yes. seeking the advice of, of others who are, <coughs> I'm always seeking the advice uh, of, of other people in the market. Like when we got on this call, I'm like, what's going on in the stock market? Because I know you know what's going on. And, right, right. 
um, because I don't follow it nearly as close. Oh, I hear things. You know, we heard, I heard, you know, I hear the markets kind of going up and down, but there's a lot going on in the world and it always goes up and down. So, um, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned somebody had uh, five years ago, um, they sitting on yeah. cash for five years. You know, even if they had took that money and went into crypto five years ago, you know how much money they <laughs> I know, I know. It was way down. Now they still would have made probably 10 times their investment. Um, Almost every real asset uh, and financial asset has appreciated in the five years. So the other part of this goes into, all right, so the greatest mistake is to do nothing because you can only do a little thing, right? So a lot of times it's like, why bother? I'm only going to, I'm not going to, how am I going to make a difference? Or why would that one thing make a difference? So I've got a group uh, that that I'm starting over here. Uh, of dentists. I think I mentioned that before. And so you go back to business owners and building your wealth. You know, you and I've talked about this before. Um, and I think a previous spot, if you just change 1% a week, 1% a month, right. That adds up. That is exponential growth, right? So if you were able to cut costs by 1% this month, increase sales by 1%, increase conversion rate by 1% this month, it sounds like a really small number and a very doable number, by the way. But if you did that 12 months in a row, that's not 12% growth, that's 15% growth. If you did that every two weeks, that's not 24% growth, that's more like 32, 33% growth, right? So a lot of times people say, why bother? Because I'm only going to do a 1% change. But if you did a 1% change every week, every two weeks, every month on a consistent period of time, it's exponential benefits. So that little thing, imagine if you increased your profits by... 12% 12% in a year. Imagine if you increase your profits by 24, 32, 34% in a year. That's a big number. And that all started by making little 1% improvements. Didn't Einstein, wasn't Einstein that said that the eighth wonder of the world was compounding interest? Yeah, yeah, he's credited with that. Yes. Um, that's, I don't the, know that's, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah the, be, the benefits of building on itself. And that's exactly what you get in a business, right? Would be, if, if you have a fixed overhead, right, your, your fixed overhead to run your, your practice is you know, $250,000, whatever your business is, your dental practice, you're a chiropractor, a law office, here's your fixed cost. Well, your incremental profit is you know, 100%, right? Because it doesn't cost you anymore. So if you increase your sales by 1%, 10%, 5%, that's pretty much 100% profit. But you do that a couple of times in a row, and now all of a sudden, it's a big number really, really quickly. It's exponential growth because it goes all to the bottom line. Um, and it really is it, going back to, so a lot of times people say, why bother? I can only change something really little. That's really not really impactful. Uh, you and I talk about, you know, target market and million dollar message and, and irresistible offer. Well, gosh, you, you know, irresistible offer. Why is that such a big deal? Well, it could help you make 1% improvement every week. Uh, why is a million dollar message? It could make a 3% improvement this month, right? Uh, your target market could make a 5% improvement throughout the year, right? Mm-hmm. Of identifying who you're so, so little changes can have exponential large results over time, right? And as you build upon them, right? 1% in uh, more leads, a, a 1% in more conversions, a 1% in higher profits and a 1% those build upon themselves, right? So a lot of times people don't do anything because they say, why bother? It's only going to be a small percentage increase. There's something about, hey, if you made a 1% improvement on yourself uh, every day, what is that? 365% increase, but it's exponentially, you know, yeah. larger. Than that. And I think that's partially because, you know, we, we, we said this episode is the biggest mistake investors make. I think the biggest mistake that business owners make is they don't think of themselves as an investor. And so if you're in business, you're an investor, you're investing in your business. If you're not in business and you have a job, you're an investor because you're letting someone else invest your money. But no matter what, everybody's an investor. And so yeah. if you can avoid the, the mistakes of the cost of safety, oh, I don't, um, it's, the, um, it's the old adage, if you, you know, you're not going to make any returns if you're, you know, look, you're not going to hit any base hits if you don't get in a batter box. It's the same thing. If, you're, right. if your money is sitting in an account, I, I'm, I'm so surprised by the number. I believe it's $26 trillion is in um, cash. 
basically cash or yes. um, CDs, you know, under 1%. Yes. There's $26 trillion sitting in accounts in the United States that's not making yes. any money. It's actually, if it's, if it's making less than 1%, it's losing at least 6% a year right now with inflation. That amazes me. That tells people, tells me that people, number one, are afraid of losing money. They're so afraid to yeah. lose money that they're willing to lose money. <laughs> well, that's right. So our fear of loss, I was actually just reading that. That's called behavioral finance, but it's in other things too. But it's, if you walking down the street and a $10 bill falls out of your pocket, you're going to be pretty upset about that, right? If you're walking down the street and you find a $10 bill, you're going to be excited about finding the $10 bill. It turns out they can measure that. You are twice as upset about losing the $10 as you are about finding the $10. It's, it, it's, it's called loss aversion. We hate losing so much. It's twice as painful than it is exciting to win $10, right? $20, whatever the dollar amount. So you're exactly right. You talk about there's $26 trillion. That is the right number. And it's and they're sitting in money markets and cash and CDs. And it's the loss aversion. The fear of losing is so strong for them that they do nothing, right? But by doing nothing, like you just said, they're actually losing money because inflation is eating away at that purchasing power. You know, inflation was 7% in December and January. So they can only buy 93 cents on the dollar for what they could have bought two months ago. So you're exactly right. But it's it's called loss aversion. It's behavioral finance. We, we hate losing twice as much as we love winning. I was, kind of I, I was on that subject. I was reading a blog post a while back about this, um, this guy whose grandfather was kind of a hermit, but he didn't trust the U.S. currency when it went off of the uh, gold standard. Okay. Um, he started, you know, when was that? That, uh, around World War 72, II. Yeah. yeah whenever, well, I thought Nixon took it off. In the 70s. Uh, but, so when it moved off of there. So his grandfather bought gold and silver, but nobody knew he had it. He, he thought that that would have been safer. So rather than leaving cash sitting in a bank account, he bought gold and silver and he literally just stashed it. And he was stashing it apparently for a lot of years. And this guy, after the grandfather died, they went through the house. And there was millions of dollars in gold and silver. But <laughs> undoubtedly, he said some of the, the, the certificates of when his grandfather bought, like he was buying gold at like 80 bucks an ounce. And he would buy <coughs> one ounce. And that was a lot of money, 80 bucks. Like when he was buying, it was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just take 80 bucks and buy an ounce of gold. Think about ounce of gold today. You know, I mean, it's what, 1800 bucks. So the right. So his grandfather was doing this over time because he didn't trust currency. And I find it a little bit funny. Here we are in 2022 today, 2-2-22, two, two, right? So um, here we are. And you see all these cryptocurrencies going like this. But yet the paper currencies are crap right now. How can, how can cryptocurrencies be going down and paper currencies be going down at the same time that tells you that somebody's manipulating the market. And so well, it's, the cryptocurrencies are not, they're, they're pure speculation right now. So yeah. that, that's, that's what that really tells you. That's like watching in uh, a dot-com stock in the 90s. Sure. Right? That pets.com or, or, or some of these stocks that had no earnings got pumped up and they got dumped. That's what crypto is right now. It's a pump and dump scheme of I'm going to talk it up and get it up and then it's going to, we're going to all panic. We're going to sell it. It's exactly like the pump and dump scheme. It's not a real currency yet because of that volatility. Well, the U.S. Like, dollar, the British say, pound. Yes, I, don't, I don't want to downplay the blockchain because it is real. It does the blockchain have technology is value. Well, yes. I, I, give you, right now. When, I mean, I've been studying about it because I want to know about it. So they like, for instance, tokenizing data. This is what really the block. I didn't really yeah. understand it. But so you got all these cell phone companies, right? So you think of, we all think of cell towers like cell towers. We don't think of much about it. But what a lot of the blockchain is, is that you get 50,000 users of cell phone in an area, like in Atlanta. They're all driving on the roads in Atlanta. Those cell towers cannot route all that data. So what they actually use is people's um, the data ports that are these part of the blockchain. And the people who own those data points 
ports don't do it. It's all automated, but they're routing data is all they're doing. And they're securely routing data and the cell phone companies pay for that. That's where the actual underlying value of the cryptocurrency comes from. If you're the backbone behind that, you're the, Correct. you're the backbone. I, you know, I'm not going to name any cryptocurrencies, but that's. No, no, no. But, well, the currencies themselves are not the backbone. This is just like the dot-com bubble, right? So you don't care if it was pets.com or google.com or yahoo.com. They all had to buy uh, servers. They all had to buy data storage. They all had to buy Cisco routers. So the, the way I played that back in the 90s was you bought the backbone of the internet because all the dot-com people needed that. That's what's going on here with blockchain. We don't care if it's Ether or if it's uh, Bitcoin or whatever the currency are. What you want is, in my opinion, again, this is not an investment show. It's opinionated. The opinion is you want the backbone people that are going to benefit. So blockchain is like um, an open spreadsheet that you and I can see things. So you were talking real estate earlier. And so the, the best example is like title insurance. When you yeah. buy a house, you had a title insurance issue with one of yours. If that's all on this Excel spreadsheet, I can see that your title is clear. You can see that I got the money in the bank. And so we don't need the lawyer or the closing attorney or in Texas, it's like a title somebody person, right? You and I can do it ourselves because you can see that I got the money in the bank and I can see that your title is clean because it's on the spreadsheet, yep. right? And then we can do a transaction and we didn't need the closing attorney and we didn't need the title insurance. That's the technology, the blockchain, the, that, that, that trans... Uh, uh, the, the ability to to the transparency. Transparency. Yep. So yeah, transparency is what I'm trying to say. That's the benefit of the blockchain is what industries are going to be upset, right? Real estate's one. You could have um, financial transactions. You did uh, import export stuff. That's the same thing. They got to go to, you got to have a bank here in the US. They got to have a bank in China. You got to have a product over there. The product's got to, they got to know that you have the money here. I did, I did a transaction in, in with a company in China this past week. And we did it through the blockchain. We did it through. That's through, awesome. Yes. We did it through crypto because it was faster than the banks. The yes. second I clicked on my phone, they had it on there. They That's had the, the they had the currency and they converted it immediately into the wand, your wand. Yep. Um, and quick and easy. And there was the transaction fee. Normally, a international wire is 35 bucks. And I think the whole yeah. transaction cost us probably in the area of three bucks. Yeah. Isn't that hilarious? That, yeah. That's who... That's how you play this thing, in my opinion, is you look for the backbone people that are going to benefit, not the particular coin. You, you know, is it pets.com? Is it Google? Is it Yahoo? You want the people that are using the, 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 the backbone. We, we got sidetracked, but I, I well, love No, this that's, that's what we're talking about is, is these, these mistakes that investors make is, number one, you and I are both talking about something that we don't know a ton about. I'm right. studying crypto, but, you know. If you, why am I studying crypto? Why am I studying blockchain and tokenizing that? Because I want to know, because I know the world is going to move that. I know the NFT yeah. thing is a big thing, but- You don't know what you don't know, right. And But you know what? That means, I, I will tell you, here's what I know about crypto. Every dollar I've invested into it so far has turned into 20 cents. So that's what I know about crypto. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. That's but if, I wasn't, if I wasn't in the game, of course, I, I, I'm not, we don't make investing oh, advice. Right. And if yeah, you yeah. want to take advice from a guy who's losing 80% of his money on crypto, but never <laughs> invest more than you can afford to lose. But I am, right. I, I figure I can't learn unless I'm in You're the in game. The game. Um, I, now I say that it, when I used to invest in commodities, 20% of my money was in the markets. 80% I paper traded as if I had money in it. So I followed my trades and That's I did that it. because it, it wasn't quite, if you're in commodities, things can go good really quick and they can go bad really quick. And you get a margin call and that is not a fun place to be. So, um, <laughs> But the, the point, the point being, I've invested in commodities. That's a great place to invest, uh, especially if you're a farmer. But it's not a very comfortable place to invest if you don't understand it. It's well, that goes back. You're, you're making a great point. So the greatest mistake is to do nothing because you only think you can do a little, right? <laughs> that was kind of our starting quote. And what you're saying here is. You're trying to learn more about other investment areas. You're trying to learn more about different areas of real estate. You're trying to earn more, uh, learn more about crypto and blockchain, right? You're not doing nothing. You're, 
that was my point. You're not, you know, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over and over. Uh, you're doing something. You have a plan that I've got to learn about crypto. I got to learn about blockchain and NFTs. And I need to learn about other areas of real estate. Um, you have a plan that you're, that you're learning. This is Dave's plan is, is I'm doing something. It may not be a lot. I'm doing a little, but a little is better than nothing. Because if I sit around and do nothing, five years from now, I get left behind. Yeah. Right. Your business gets left behind. Your wealth gets left behind. You're actually in a worse off position than you were if you did nothing five years from now because inflation. We just talked about that. Um, so you're you are doing something, and your something is you've got a way that Dave likes to learn. He likes to be involved and put his you know money where his mouth is. But it's just a little money because I don't want to lose too much. But I'm but I'm learning. So then when I'm ready to make bigger bets, I, I know what I'm doing. So. That goes back to this whole thing. How about a plan? Put a plan together in place. Doing nothing is a terrible plan, right? And doing the same thing over and over is a terrible plan. And doing nothing because you don't know is a terrible plan. Doing nothing because you think it's just a little incremental difference is a, that's a terrible plan. You know, even if it's only a one percent improvement in your knowledge of blockchain, that's a good use of your time. Well, let's let's say one thing about that. You said doing the same thing over and over. No, if you've got something that's working really well. And your that's your plan is to keep doing that over and over again. There's nothing wrong with that. If you know, correct. I mean, you've got something that's working. What, what, yeah. That's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's when you do the same thing that's doing nothing for you over and over again. That's that's the definition of insanity. When you're getting poor results, and you continue to do the same thing that create poor results. Um, yeah. There's a reason I put on weight. Because I do the same thing <laughs> I put on the weight. I mean, it's a fact. I play a weight roller coaster ride. I've played it most of my adult life. And why? Because um, I'll, I'll get tied up in work. I'll eat more. I will sleep less. I'll exercise less. And it happens. That's the insanity part of it. We all have these things that we do. We all have these things, yes. And uh, I know you like ice cream. I like chocolate. I like beer. I like, you know, things that, that can put on weight pretty quick. So. Yeah. Well, that's funny. So, so it's, it's really goes back to this. Uh, it's another article. Uh, it's your brain's fault that you make the same mistake over and over again. So our brain is a very habitual thing. Your, your brain is very habitual. Your natural tendencies. Uh, some people have uh, a natural tendency to eat when they're stressed. Some people have a natural tendency to exercise when they're stressed. Some people have an exercise, you know, they eat when they're whatever, happy, whatever. We have these tendencies that our brains are in these habits. And, and, and you talk, you and I talk about this almost every New Year's too, right? Establishing new habits. So a lot of times you're doing the same thing over and over again because it's just a habit that's ingrained and you got to change that habit, right? You're doing the same thing over and over again that's not working, but you just haven't changed that habit, right? So so you could have a plan. Let's go back to this whole thing about how to create wealth. You should create wealth. Doing nothing is a terrible plan. Doing the same thing over and over if it's a bad plan not getting the results you want that's crazy it's not your fault it's your brain fault your brain is used to you doing nothing your brain has a habit of you not taking risk of not learning new things so i would say the biggest mistake uh, investors make is doing nothing the biggest mistake is 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 doing the same thing over and over even though it's not getting you the results you want right i would say the dave methodology is learn something <laughs> learn something new learn about crypto learn about blockchain Learn about real estate. Learn about exercise. Learn about health. Well, um, we don't have crypto as one of our four pillars, Matt. So uh, <laughs> we do have but it's something to learn. The fourth pillar, maybe because it's a purchase other cash flowing assets and build wealth. It could fall in that fourth pillar. But but look, if you got a business, you got to start pulling money off the top. Invest in, at least in pillar two, which is real estate, and invest in pillar three, which is build um, a a retirement funds and i say funds plural because you should be you, you should be fully funding those things and yeah. and that requires learning you, you shouldn't yeah. just turn your money over to people and say here go invest this fund. well learning and hiring experts right you and i yeah. are always this is this is what we do this is what our mastermind our coaching is about right is learning from others right you can learn it on your own. That's great. You can do it by yourself. That's great. Why not speed it up? Learn from somebody who's already done it. Learn from other people that have already done it. Our group uh, coaching program is exactly that. Other business owners have, that have used their business to build wealth and they want to do more of it. Use their business to build more wealth. They're just starting on their journey or they're migrating their journey or they're improving their journey. 
that's what we do. Uh, uh, ProfitabilityMD.com, uh, Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. If you want to be a part of a group that is, is learning to use their business to build their wealth, that's what we do in our group program. Our irresistible offer still comes back to we can find any business owner $50,000, $75,000, $100,000 off spending a dollar more in advertising and marketing. That's our irresistible offer. That's our profitability, uh, profit acceleration session. Why do we do that? We're trying to give you what you want, not what you need, right? If that gets you in the door, let's find you $50,000. My bet is that's not going to solve all your problems. You're going to need the help of our group coaching program to learn how to use that money to generate wealth, to use the business to generate wealth, right? To build your wealth over time. So I uh, love this. This is episode 160, biggest mistake investors make. And it's really about doing nothing or doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, right? Uh, ProfitabilityMD.com. We got our YouTube channel, ProfitabilityMD.com. We got our podcasts everywhere that they're available. And then Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com and Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. This is good stuff. Use your business to generate wealth. Use your business to build wealth. All right, Matt, have good. fun in Delray. All right, take care. All right, man.